next thing is to um, picking a gun. Picking a gun. So pistols, rifles, Sometimes shotguns. Sometimes rifle will be your first one, especially but, at the age. Right, but here's the thing: if you're like thirty something and you never shot a gun, well, before, then yeah, you're gonna want to. See, this is yeah. like these are important. It depends on capabilities. About. Exactly, and here's the thing: if you're scared of firearms and but you like feel like it's a duty to have one, which gun should you buy first? Which gun should you shoot first? You know what I'm well, saying? So. Starting off, if you're scared, um, going and learning with um, a confident individual and a knowledgeable individual. And just remembering that a gun is no different than a pen. Pens Dude. don't misspell words. Guns don't kill people. Was that the person holding the pen misspells the word, and the person shooting the gun is the bad person, not the object. So get confident in understanding that none of the guns that we have here today, we lay them on a table for a thousand years, nothing will ever happen to that gun. Until it's moved by an individual. Yep. So I don't know where that, you know, thing came from, but yeah. Uh, when I first, this is something that I wish that I first knew when I bought or when I first started shooting. If you are afraid, like I was when I first started, I wish I started with a 22 long rifle first. And there's a reason why. Low recoil, pretty quiet. True. Very quiet. So. Um, my parents grew up uh, in um, in a time of war uh, during Vietnam, so for them, every time they hear like a loud snap, it would bring them back to what it was like. So, like I said, some people are scared of that. I get it. Um, I've seen it happen, um, just like how they react when it comes to just loud noises and other things like that. So, overcoming your fear of just loud noises, I would start with the 22 long rifle, and I would actually shoot outdoors. Do you guys agree? That's funny. My first shot was actually a 45 Colt. Like, like revolver. That was my first gun I ever shot. No shit. Yeah. Wow. I, I skipped the twenty two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like, you know, I, 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 that, that's why we have different perspectives, right? So for me, I wish I, for, I started with a twenty two long rifle outdoors. A couple of reasons. Um, indoor ranges cause a lot more noises. Um, you know, when you go to a range, you know, you have your, you have your eye protection, your ear protection. Two most important things out there, right? Especially your ears. Holy God. Ten eyes is a real thing, guys. So, say what? Yeah. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> so, if you guys so don't know what that is, we, look it up. Really say the E is better because all I hear is the E. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but so yeah, for me, uh, how I overcome um, guns was just shooting them a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are just new getting in, into it and loud noises scare you, I would shoot a twenty-two long rifle with you know obviously your earpods on, and you're gonna see loud isn't is not that bad. It really is. We're just going straight to the forty-five. Rios, we're trying to help people. Okay, and then oh you know God. I transitioned to three eighties and then nines and forty fives, and I just kind of ventured off, and then eventually the the fear kind of went away, and I actually enjoyed shooting. In my opinion, it, you know, like you should just. Go right off the bat, shoot what you want to shoot. Shoot what you want to shoot? Yeah. Well, what if they're scared? How, what, are you gonna, what are you gonna say? What do you, okay, so here, and here's my argument. Lay it. Okay. Are you gonna wanna understand a 22 in a, like, in a self-defense situation? Or let's just say night mill. You, you, if you're gonna be scared either way. It, they're both gonna go boom. All it does is a noise and movement of the weapon. You're going to have to learn how to shoot. That's why we teach you the basics on the grips to hold on to it. You're got, you have to experience and understand it. That way, if you ever get in a situation where you need to use it, you know. Yeah, I agree. You already you already have that mind. I know what to expect. Yeah. So especially if it's your first gun and they're already looking for a pistol, mm -hmm. like hey, we understand. Like I'm not gonna say it's my opinion. We understand like, it's the different noise level and all that, but. If you want to be concealed carrying all that, like you need to experience what you're gonna shoot. Yeah, I told, I definitely agree with that one. Long story. It's just um, if people who are not comfor comfortable with you know concealing yet, but they at least want to know how to operate a firearm, you know, and like I said, they're scared or if they're young, you know, like. Because I mean, if they're gonna be scared of a twenty-two, you might as well just give up, just get off. Like, well, you know, you just do it until you become unafraid. Yeah. You know, so that's just that's just my take, um, but. It's, it's fun. Yeah, but now getting back into um, 
If you're gonna purchase your first uh, pur purchase your first gun, would it be a shotgun, pistol, or rifle? So for me, it depends. Uh, asking that question, it depends on what your goal is. If you just want to own a shotgun, go shoot trap. You want to own a, a 22, just go shoot pop cans when you're camping. You want to buy a hand, handgun for self defense or a you know big game bolt action rifle for hunting. It all depends on what your goal is, what your main goal of that firearm is. If you just want to own a 22, go shoot pop cans when you're uh, camping, and then you know go to the range every now and again. And don't get it wrong, 22 can do damage. Yeah, 22 they, yeah, they, they they can do damage. damage. So we're, we're not we're not he's, shitting on 22. He's, <laughs> he's getting way out over his skis on yeah, this right. one, but uh, it, it depends on where you want to start, and what your end goal is. Yeah. If you just want to get familiar with firearms, you don't technically have to buy one. A lot of ranges nowadays offer rentals that's true yeah and, and that right. would be a good place to start if you have zero or very little experience and also are very budget oriented you can go and rent one for an hour and test it out different calibers different makes different models mm -hmm. test them out and see if you and can get comfortable with them that way mm -hmm. um our kind of thought process here uh rios has mentioned before self-defense um, if you're getting into self-defense, you can go all the way at the lowest end of the spectrum, 22s, or you can go all the way to the far end of the spectrum, 500 Smith Wesson, <laughs> 50 Desert Eagle, and anything in between. 500 Smith, 50 Desert Eagle, not practical self-defense guns. Nope. They will work if you're being attacked by dinosaurs or grizzly bears. <laughs> So not so ears. not so good for concealed carrying when you're going to the mall. And definitely not good for your ears either. Yeah. Holy God, that shit that, that's up in the blind. But uh, in my opinion, starting out, if you have a little bit of experience and you especially budget oriented and you can only afford to do one, you can't go wrong with nine millimeter. Yep. Most common. Most very that's very most very common. common. It's one on top three. Yeah, so there's a couple uh, yeah, that, um just now we're going on a topic of uh, of let's say, you know, concealing, like, a gun. Yeah. This is something I wish I learned when I first started. Since I bought my 320 um, X Compact, that ship was fat. And as you can tell, I'm a skinny dude. So I, it, it was tough for me to actually conceal mm -hmm. it. So shut up. Um, so it was tough for me to conceal it. Uh, so then I went on a long journey of trying to figure out what gun that I can conceal comfortably uh, in order, and not only that, but just um, there were other factors as well, like how many rounds it can hold, um, if it can hold a weapon light or whatever the heck it is. But the basis of it is, I wish that I tried every single gun at the range before I even committed to buying the one that actually fit my hand. Because if you haven't noticed, my hands are tiny compared to Rios's hands, which is like big mamas. So. <laughs> So, like I said, every gun is di yeah, every gun is different in everyone's hands. So this is a, uh, another thing that I want to touch base on is if you're gonna shoot a gun, how does it fit in your hand? You know, like there's th there's all these different sizes, these different grip lengths. Um, if you're grabbing it like this, and the back strap and the front strap are like this, gun's probably too big. Yeah, or if it's you know, and there's guns that are actually kind of too small, like an LCP. No Ruger, you know, that thing shoots like 380s and it's like, it's like this thin, right? So obviously a guy with Rios's hands, like it's not going to be shooting effectively. However, uh, let's say someone who's like 4'11", you know, smaller hands than mine, able to shoot an LCP, no big deal, right? Is so, you're not 4'11"? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, just saying out there, there's this, uh, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. So, <laughs> What's the purpose of me being in this video? I'm telling you to shut up. But uh, like I said, if you have the ability, you're in a location that's got a range where they have their own guns. Do it. Start going there. Get, uh, get a little get a little expertise from the folks working there, especially the rental counter guys. Generally, deal with people of lower experience, mm -hmm. and they can you can be like walk up, be like, hey, look, man, got really little experience. Want to want to get into a handgun? but I don't know where to start. Can you help me with the rental guns you have here for me to try? And yeah. if you only test two or three at a time, test as many as you can, mm -hmm. 
at the end of that, you will have a better understanding, probably won't run into the issues that he ran into with picking one. Yeah. Um, another thing that we actually want to touch base on since we're talking about this is gun manufacturers. Which ones should you trust? Which ones have higher credibility? Which ones have lower credibility? Which ones are overhyped or not? So this is something that we want to sh uh, you know, touch base with you guys. Just because it's a well-known gun doesn't mean it's the right gun for you. Also general, keep... general rule of thumb Fair. is if the manufacturer does not have a warranty, a lifetime of the gun, not of the owner, lifetime warranty of the firearm, probably wouldn't trust it. If you yeah. if you experience an issue with a well-made gun from a reputable manufacturer, catastrophic issue, anything like that, you can send it back to them for free and they will fix it. Your big name brands, uh, Smith & Wesson, Colt, Ruger, uh, Glock, Kimber, FN. FN, almost every large reputable manufacturer has a lifetime warranty on their guns. When you experience an issue, you can send it back to them for free and they will fix it. Yeah. And if it can't be fixed due to an issue with the gun itself, not negligence on the handling, they will replace it if they can't fix it. Yeah. That was still a mom. Let's hear it. He actually does. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Fine. So he bought an FN. <laughs> yeah. No. No, seriously, you can't. All right. I can't put that in the video, dude. No. It's okay. You uh, can't. He bought a high point. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, okay, so. Um, just letting over the current that part. Yeah, I know. Like, like, so like, we are. I'm showing, that's, we talk about it. Just, we're talking about illegal shit. I just did. I put a fucking. No, you place. don't have to fucking say what you did. Like, oh, I had some. I had an issue with the plastic. <laughs> The plastique was weak. Okay. Anyways, so, um, but yeah, that, you know, we're not just talking about, like, we're not just not talking about pistols. We're also talking about, like, AR-15s, AKs, uh, shotguns as well. Um, and long guns. Full and, action. Yeah, full actions. And you're going to hear a lot of manufacturers that get absolutely crapped on and other, you know, manufacturers that are absolutely praised on. And, and speaking of that, you know, just because it's a cheap, you know, rifle or whatever doesn't mean it's not reliable exactly especially these days in the modern age yeah. they're all going to be re pretty reliable as long as you take care of it you know yeah and that's something that's another topic that we'll talk uh, that we'll dive into when it comes to taking care of your firearms because if you haven't noticed you actually need to take care of take care of things and also when we do reviews and comparisons i've seen friends and people I was like, like show me their guns and it's rusted it doesn't look like it's gone through it's like, right I understand that you don't really shoot that much, but at least take care of it. it. Take care yeah, of it. take care of it. Um, another thing that I believe that most gun manufacturers out there should really take care of is their customers. I've actually dealt with a couple of uh, gun manufacturers, like really high end ones too, and it's just really sad to see that they don't really take care of their customers of than what other YouTubers have said. It's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyways, um, just, you know, just kind of getting back on track here. Um, uh, let me try to think of, okay, picking your gun. So, uh, we, we went over on picking, uh, over, let's say a concealed carry gun, but what about, uh, what full size, or full size compact, or micro compact, like all that. Like once again, it goes into like how it fits in your hand and how you, your foot. It, it's a, it's a preference. Yeah. Some, some people like McDonald's, some people like Burger King. Mm-hmm. You gotta and, find what feels right for you. Absolutely. So, you know, you're, you're, uh, oh. You want to talk about like uh, was it um, uh, was it listening to or not taking advice from people who are yeah uh, sponsored uh, people uh, people will do reviews and stuff and they may leave out issues that they have with specific guns that they test because the manufacturer is paying mm. them yes. or trading them a review for a gun. Um, we won't do that. When we review a gun, He'll we're talking about one. If it's got issues, we'll tell you we'll it's got issues. Them. Same with uh, same with accessories. Oh yeah. If they've got problems, we'll tell you our experience. Just because we experience it does not mean that is a uh, does not mean that represents that company, that manufacturer, that make or model. Does not mean it represents 
all of it. It represents the piece that we had and we tested and we reviewed. It represents that specific piece. And if we run into an issue with a, with a gun and a manufacturer, we will reach out to said manufacturer. Hey, here's the issue we had. If they have something, if they, if it's an issue they know of and they're, oh, hey, yeah, we're aware, send it back to us. We'll fix that issue. We'll send it, we'll send it back to you. You can test, you can run, run your tests again. We'll let you know. We're not, we're going to do our best not to release anything before we've done our due diligence. And well, uh, also another thing, um, wow, I have something to throw up. <clears throat> Anyways. Did you get it out? No, not yet. Oh. <laughs> Give me a sec. You're keeping that one in there too. <laughs> hey, check out this round. Mm -hmm. Ah, gross. Anyway, no, this, is, uh, this is Murphy's uh, home office here. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right. <laughs> All right. I feel like, we're um, like I said, um, if like, I, we, I don't expect uh, people to you know, uh, send us the channel, uh, send to this channel stuff for us to try out. Like I said, all of our guns we buy with our own money from gun stores, uh, the manufacturers themselves. So we're not really, I don't want to say we're shells, but. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, let's just say that, like, you know, the, the stuff that we purchase is, is with our own money and no one's going to be sending stuff out. So. And we're not purchasing things that we don't want. Yeah. yeah. That's just the general rule. If we think it's legit and we really like it and it's beneficial for you, mm -hmm. we're we'll you there. Yeah. And if we test something out just because we're like, oh, hey, that would be cool. We test it out and it is junk. We will let, we'll you, let know. you know. Yeah, like, hey, look. Or even to the point where it's like, you should just, you should, you should just not consider this yeah. at all. Yeah. Like, it's not even worth a review. Like, there's some aspects where like, it's decent for its little capabilities, but there's junk where you just like, don't even want to bother you. Throw up there and say we just tested this out, but your Amazon special weapon light. Yeah, yeah. It's probably not All worth the, no. probably not worth the ten dollars you spent to get it to your house. So let's talk about let's talk about marketing scams then. Yeah, um, you're gonna see a lot of things on social media. If it says military grade, God. <laughs> so for uh, for all the veterans out there, you know that generally does not mean trustworthy. <laughs> military grade is the lowest bidder because the government does not like to spend your money. They like to take it, military they just don't like to spend it. Is a gray line. <laughs> it's not bad. It's just a very gray line. But it's not good, if that yeah. makes sense. So because they got they the reason it's military grade is because they do it for the bunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Hundred thousand units at a time. Yeah. It's a business, guys. So versus commercial, uh, you know, like companies like that like they they have more time to invest and focus on our products mm -hmm. there you go all right so now that we've gotten that out of the way of just picking a gun um you you uh, i guess hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about or getting more information about what type of gun you want to purchase if it's your first one like you said just try it out um, do as much research and information as you can um and don't be afraid when you're testing guns out if you Generally, general rule of thumb on handguns is you have semi-autos and revolvers. Mm -hmm. There are a couple others, bolt actions, brake actions, but generally it's your revolver and your semi-auto. Yeah. If you're not finding a semi-auto that you like, don't be afraid to ask about trying one of the revolvers. Mm -hmm. Yes, it goes into different things, ammo capacity, calibers, things of that nature, but maybe or that's, what if you, what if you maybe that's what you need. Maybe that is the thing that fits your hand the best and you shoot the best. Maybe you want a rifle on a compact, but you don't want to shoot it like a uh, rifle caliber. 9mm AR, compact short. Mm -hmm. Have PCC. a brace. Yep, PCC. And we'll strap it, uh, strap it with, uh, you know, with, dis uh, with your disabilities. Um, which I should claim my disability, but you know. Okay, well, <laughs> um, that's yeah. another thing as, as well too, is like, let's say you're 50, 60, or 70 years old and you want to buy your first handgun. If you have arthritis, tendon lines, or carpal tunnel in your wrist. Just have it right there, right next to your wheelchair, just strapped. Dude, I, dude I've, I've so. seen people who, who actually do do that, um, but at the end of the day, if, you, if you're shooting at the range mm -hmm. and you have wrist pains and stuff like that, that's another thing you have to consider as well. Weapon placement, when we, you don't have it on you. We'll, we'll get into that later. We'll definitely get into that later. So. I jump way too ahead. Yes, you, know, you do. My brain just... I'm, I'm here to slow him down, okay? 